What's up, everybody? Benjamin Holiday and Mark Lane with On Your Mark Worldwide. Again, back again for another FAQ Fridays. What's up, everybody? Are you ready to start? Awesome. Well, if you guys are awesome, but <laughs> so for those who are just tuning in for the first time, FAQ Friday with Bo Am is where you, the audience, get to ask myself or Ben questions relating to fitness, health, uh, mental fortitude, uh, healthy habits, mindset, mindset, exactly, ways to help progress whether your brain or body to move forward. So we're going to start off with a couple of questions right. that we received here. Give me one second. Brain or body moving forward. Brain or body. That's right. Oh, I apologize, yes. All right. Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> let's get this turned on so we can see everybody. All right. Boom. Gotcha. Cool. So I have one question for you, one question for me. Which one do you want to start out with? Let me do that. Okay. So uh, go ahead and go shoot for me. I okay. think it works out pretty good whenever you ask me the question first. So let's go okay. with that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So. Due to the uprising of suicides during COVID, do you believe it's because of a lack of finances or a lack of purpose? Right. So, <clears throat> suicide obviously is a very, um, a very big subject that we want to put a lot of focus on. Right. Suicide is never good, and it's very good. It's important for us to acknowledge that suicide almost always is not just from one thing. Right. <clears throat> Suicide is normally a conglomeration of things, a bunch of stuff going on in somebody else's life, somebody's life, usually during a, a particular developmental stage in their life, right? We all go through stages in life and have certain challenges as we go through those stages. So adolescents or people in uh, teenage years and things like that are having the biggest change of their life, the so first biggest change of their life, I guess I should say. <clears throat> So it hits pretty hard, right? If you can overcome that period, then usually you have a pretty good time until you're like 25, and then like 45, 50s, stuff like that, and it starts to have this midlife crisis thing, like what am I doing with my life? I'm you know, ending my career or whatever. Usually that's how things go. So right, there are these stages in our life. So it's good to understand and to acknowledge that it's normally not just one thing, right? So thinking about suicides, suicides being on the rise, right? So as you, if you guys look at the statistics, um, there was one spot that Mark looked up that it showed it rising. So it showed it uh, increasing in the US. <clears throat> and in the past decade, realistically, suicides have been on the rise. There's a lot of things going on in our lives and in our, our civilization, our, our, our humanity, basically, that is challenging. And we have to try to cope with that challenge. Our, our technology is going much faster than we can evolve to keep up with, right? So we have to try to find new ways to keep up with it. And obviously it's proving to be difficult. But <clears throat> I believe that COVID definitely has a point to play, a part to play in that, in the rise of suicides and the rise of people seeking out help for suicide as well. So that's also another important thing to acknowledge, that a lot more people are seeking out help than have been in the, in the previous time. So all that information, all that work that people have been doing to spread the knowledge, spread, spread the information about, hey, suicide awareness, suicide awareness, has been working. It's been doing really good. So <clears throat> on one thing I looked up from last year, it seemed like um, suicide deaths were down. So people were actually uh, going out there and seeking help, right, and doing attempts were way up, but the deaths, the actual conclusion were actually following through <clears throat> Except if you're statistically a male, apparently they tend to follow through a lot more, which is sad, of course. But anyways, <clears throat> it's good to understand the different um, situations that are going on and the acknowledgement of awareness, right? So in the times that we're dealing with right now in COVID, it's super important that you pay attention to your children, right? So like I said, adolescence is that first major part, first major life change that they're going through that crazy hard. It's crazy hard. So many things are changing within and outside, and it's really important for their, their mental structure for survival, right? They're like, and if I'm not part of a tribe, then I'm not going to survive. And that's what our brain thinks. That's what, that's what drives their, their developmental process. So make sure that they have some kind of connection with friends, have some kind of connection with people, even if it has to be on a distance or whatever. Like, that's super important. If they play video games and they connect and they feel super good, and you're like, you have to get off the video games, you've been doing that forever. I understand you want to moderate it, monitor it, but check and see how they feel, right? And if they're the way they feel, the way they're acting is, is really dramatic, if you pull them off from it for a long period of time, like, sorry, you can't play video games because you're doing too much or something, like, understand that that can be part of their socialization. That can be part of their being part of a tribe and feeling okay with themselves, 
right? So it's, it's really good and important to monitor. And it's super important to ask directly. Say, hey, have you been having thoughts about hurting yourself? Have you been having thoughts about being super depressed? Like, you don't like this life or whatever. Like, ask them directly, right? Because worst case scenario is they kill themselves, right? So you feeling embarrassed or feeling upset about asking them should not even be an issue, right? So make sure you pay attention to that. Pay attention to your children. Pay attention to the different people you have, your loved ones. Uh, 45 to 55, too, if you have some parents out there. Like, what are you guys got hobbies? Are you doing anything? Are you trying to make sure that you're working in a way that makes you feel happy, right? So find something that makes you happy. Find something that encourages you to be up in the morning and doing something, right? Have a good schedule. There are so many things that you can do. Anyways, if you want any more information about that, of course, reach out to us. Reach out to our page. There's a lot of information there. And there's also the suicide awareness hotlines all over the place. If you, if you know anybody that seems like they may be getting pretty depressed because of the situation, don't be afraid to reach out. Like, really don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to call them and be like, hey, how you doing? You want to hang out? We can stay distant, right? Let's just hang out. Let's do something. Let's figure some stuff out. Let's talk. Like, that's really big and important, too. I've been reaching out to a bunch of people recently saying how important it is to schedule times to talk with people. Some people do it automatically. Some people have their parents or they have their uh, brothers and sisters or they have some friends that they've been longtime friends with. They're like, hey, every whatever, every weekend, every day even, I talk to this person. That's super important. So get somebody, somebody that you know, somebody that you became acquainted with online throughout this time or whatever, be like, hey, do you think you have the availability to talk to me for an hour a week, right? 30 minutes a week. Whatever you can, whatever you can do, whatever you can pull, whatever you can organize, but that's super important, do it like at least one. If you're just home alone, like me, I'm home alone almost all the time. And it's really important for me to reach out and be engaging with people somehow, right? Because I'm a human being just like everybody else. So I'm gonna have issues with it too. If there, if there are people that feel like, no, 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 I'm good being alone, <clears throat> there's something else that's balancing them out and allowing them to do that, right? And that's fine. It's okay. But it's good to be aware of that. It's good to think about that. So I think that's, uh, I think that will end with that, with the whole suicide awareness and um, COVID-19 being a, a contributing factor, that potential contributing factor to the rise in, in suicides. Yeah. <clears throat> Gosh, especially right. adolescents, especially teenagers. It's, it worries me a lot because I have... Two teenagers, two teenagers yeah. now. So like, um, my son thirteen, my daughter's going to be fifteen. And it's like ugh, I can only imagine what they're trying to go through with this current environment with COVID and all that stuff like that. I know my son particularly, um, he has not been able to fully express himself physically in that sense, or right. because he's, he's been he's been more at home. The home body. Like, what am I going to do? Am I going to climb up exactly. on walls? <laughs> yeah, and so I get very that inside. kind of stuff. Yeah, so. I think the best way I've always explained it is like he's kind of an extrovert in an introvert world right now. Mm. And it's kind of like, uh, yeah. it, that's kind of, that can, that's tough when you feel like you need to be outgoing and socialize and have fun and do a lot of physical things, but you can't. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, I got a question from Alejandro Fitness. How can someone lose weight without dieting? All right, so. How can someone lose weight without, without dieting? dieting? Okay. All right, so there's, we're going to go through a few avenues here. Drink water. Yeah, well, so, uh, it's kind of funny. I would say start with simple stuff. So, how's their sleep? Sleep plays a huge, huge role in helping reset the body's hormones and systems and, and your brain. So, that. yep, repair wise, right? So, if you're not getting a lot of sleep, you're probably putting, you're probably creating a lot of cortisol in your body. Your body's stressing out a lot, not properly recovering. Cortisol, like I mentioned before, is very uh, anabolic uh, to fat and very catabolic to muscle. So you lose muscle and you gain more fat, actually, when you actually become more, more sleep deprived, and of course, all the shoot up, shoot up. So that'd be the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, how frequently are they moving? So this is where exercise plays a role. Um, are they up and about? Are they just at least walking? Or are they actually even exercising? Are they even doing anything cardiovascular, you know, cardiovascular or strength training wise? Um, that obviously plays a huge role because how much you move your body of course, determines how well your body is burning through nutrients and calories and how, how, you, how you fuel that body as well as just as much of an important role in terms of the exercise you do. Um, and then kind of relating to the cortisol things, how are you handling, like what is your stress management skills? So one of the things with me, and it's kind of funny, like when I get really stressed out, it's gonna sound really bad, so I mentioned this, but I'll, I'll put my 
what is that? My dirty laundry out there. <laughs> yeah. um, so I get really stressed. It's only happened a few times in my life. Like I start balding. Like I get bald spots. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I get. Uh, some people call it it's like alopecia or whatever, but it's like no, I think it's more of like a just I'm so stressed. The hormone balance. Uh, yeah, so bad. hormone. Yeah, hormone balance goes way off the whack, and I get like bald spots. Not only that, my skin breaks out more. Yeah. Um, I get styes and like it's my body just goes off the fucking rails. Sorry, <laughs> when, when I'm really really stressed. And then of course, that alone also demotivates me to work out and things of that sort. So, yeah, figure out, you know, if you don't have already, figure out some stress management skills, whatever it may entail, the kind of music you listen to, um, if you require meditation, I meditate as frequently as I can, or I shouldn't say frequently, but at least as daily as I can, because um, for me, it makes me very, very present, as opposed to worry about my future endeavors. So in that sense, like, right, right, that's the usual cause of a lot of anxiety, is people think about the future too much, and not too many things at one time. Yeah. So for me, meditation is a way to kind of just like, eh, zero in, focusing on the present, quit stressing so much what could happen, and just focusing on what's happening right now. So that's usually how I do meditation. A brain dump, by the way, is also really good too, because a lot of people, they hold a bunch of stuff at mm-hmm. the same time, and they stress about like, there's so many things to do, there's so many things to do, ah, I can't do them all. Write it all down. Anything and everything you can possibly think of that you feel like you have to do or that needs to happen or that's on your mind, write it all down and it'll help to clear that out. Yeah, <clears throat> I totally agree. So those are the three big things I focus on. Like how are we sleeping? How are they exercising? And then what is the stress management? Uh, how are they handling their stress? Stress management skills, things of that sort. So if you, you can kind of work a way around the nutrition aspect just a little bit, but by zeroing on those three things. So I know it's not like quite a bit to put on someone, but there you can have a really good diet, but if your stress levels are off the rails, like your diet is still a detriment to you. You know, I mean, you can still gain weight, you can still gain long period, you can gain unhealthy weight and mm-hmm. things of that sort. So yeah, really get on the top of that uh, stress management skills here. Um, let's see, next question. <laughs> let's see, oh, that's an interesting one. What has history taught us about nutrition and fitness? And have we progressed to the point we are now, or have we ended up here by design? Normally in areas of human civilization, we progress and get better, more efficient, but it feels like we are still in the same place, just with new gear. What do you think? <coughs> so, me, sorry. it's really interesting how we've become, let's see, what would be like, what's another word for servant? Servants for, I guess servants for our body, recently. And I remember that recently because what we learn about the human body, what we learn about nutrition, is literally in the blink of an eye in terms of the human, you know, human civilization, human oh, yeah, species. Right, right. <clears throat> like what we've learned about the human body in the past, let's say even a hundred years, two hundred years, oh, yeah. crazy amount. Yeah. And so we know that nutrition plays a huge, huge role in terms of children development, especially in the brain. Yeah. So we know that proper nutrition already off that can improve IQ as we get older. Yep, that's pretty crazy. Um, in terms of fitness, in terms of the fitness aspect, we know that our bodies need some kind of physical stress in order to promote its performance it's or aesthetics. Yeah, yeah. So we know <clears throat> that. Um, but before that, I mean, geez, even if you go with something like just a hundred years ago, it, that wasn't really well known. So I think we're kind of realizing and experimenting a little bit in terms of what our ancestors had to go through. Why well, I can rephrase that. Sorry, give me a second here. Again, dark satanic awesomeism, just a little bit to kind of go on this. But like, it's funny how we, especially in like recent years, like how people are going for like the paleo diet. It's like. Yeah, this is like a major portion, a major thing that people stick to when like paleo. Yeah, they're like, like paleo diet. You mean the diet of like our cavemen? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, funny how that we almost had to kind of go look into our past and figure out like, okay, this is what came in before us, for modern civilization. It's like, this is what happened, right? With our foods, our food supply went kind of like this. Yeah. With like, we kind of went off the rails a bit. Like this, hey, it was good, it's good. And we went, well, it's this mass production craziness. So it's like not yeah. really food anymore. Like, yeah. let's look back to that. The issue used to be scarcity. Now the issue is overabundance. And it's quality. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I think quality plays a huge role. The and nutrient factor, nutrient density is almost ridiculously non-existent comparatively to what it was before. You think right? so? Yeah, because of what they have available in, those, in the, the soil availability, mm, right? Yeah, the stuff inside the soil stuff. itself, yeah. the mass production of stuff dilutes. Like imagine taking a photocopy of something and then making a copy, making a copy, making a copy, making a copy, making a copy. Eventually it's like super faded, you can barely tell. Yeah. Imagine that, that's basically the nutrients inside your food. 
You made so many copies and overutilized the ground and um, over mm, specified the food of animals, like genetically specified what exactly we're going to eat, that it's taken out all of the variants or all the minerals and all the special things that was in there that really helped us thrive, right? It's all been, it's all been depleted for the most part. And that's why we have stuff like true mineral to add minerals to your water. Or when mm -hmm. we have things that's like, hey, make sure you get your micronutrients. Like from supplements, it's because we can't get enough food anymore. People are like, oh, we're starting diseases and a bunch of things are happening because people are lacking this for long periods of time, so we should make them a supplement. <laughs> and all the pharmaceuticals that are just killing our bodies slowly too. It's, oh my gosh, it's freaking crazy. Yeah. So anyways. <laughs> but turns to the second half of that question when, you, when it was relating to like how we kind of feel like we're at a standstill a little bit in terms of... As a species, I always presume. Right, like, like exercising on its own. So we know human beings need exercise in some form. So we know we've changed where, like you were saying, how much of your total daily energy is spent on work or whatever you do, right? Am I doing uh, a lot of, like moving around? Am I bailing hay, right? Am I working the farm? Am I working the mules or whatever? Am I doing all this crazy stuff, building things by hand? Am I putting my body through a lot of <clears throat> st stress? And like, anyways, and then now we don't do so much of that, right? So the food that we eat is not only depleted, but it's also we're not using so much energy in ourselves. So our exercise is now becoming a, like a task or a scheduled in thing rather than just a daily life. Like, oh, people, because of the way that they worked, they got exercise. So they didn't have to worry about it being, I need to exercise. And then it's been growing more and more and more that we need to exercise. And then it's becoming more refined, like a special, specific Exercise dependent on your environment, dependent on what you do throughout the day, dependent on what job you have, right? It's like, okay, so it's been shifting to accommodate our lifestyle in a sense, right? So yeah. that's kind of like. I mean, so and here's a few other things I would actually just kind of mention as well. Like, I think why we are stagnant, I guess you can say, in a sense, as a species, we don't have any real adversity. Like, if, oh, if, yeah. imagine if we had to hunt for food again. Our adversity is talking to somebody. Speaking to people. That's yeah. an adversity. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Exactly. So, like, think about it if all of a sudden all cars didn't work. Let's say a solar flare hit the planet, bam, electricity gone. Yeah. All right, how many cars are gone right off the bat? <laughs> all right, so now you have to actually walk or run to get from point A to point B or a bike, I guess you can bike, right? Right. All right, so now that that's that's an adversity, you know, through transportation. We used to be like, we used to be on our feet a lot, or we had to rely on animals to actually help us get from point A to point B. We don't have that as an adversity anymore. And then if you think about, I said, mentioning like hunting for food, like just imagine if all of a sudden like supermarkets were no longer viable because of like the, the solar flare, right? No electricity, there's no electricity, oh, yeah, there's nothing keeping those foods refrigerated or anything like that, right? So refrigeration is gone. So imagine like, oh, well now I actually have to go out and like garden and farm and actually hunt for my food. Like we don't have that anymore going in our in our in our daily lives. That wouldn't be possible. It would be, it would be ridiculous. Be, I would have fun watching in court. Oh my <laughs> so I think the lack of adversity is actually what's kind of made us stagnant in terms of our I guess you can say it went away in our in our evolution, to be quite honest. Right, okay. So I until we find it. So we look like evolving in here, not evolving here. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Our brain our IQ has gone up dramatically in like a blink of an eye, but the application of our body has gone down. And we keep finding more and more ways to do that, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like like good examples like the automotive industry. Okay, remember when you, I mean, not remember, but like, you see those old movies that crank the freaking engine by <laughs> hand? Like, and they make sure they just start it. Just start That's it. your starter, is this? Yeah, this, here's crank, <laughs> uh, turn the engine, turn the motor, hope we get a spark going, and then, all right, now the motor's coming. Now it's like, okay, well, everything's done electronically. You don't have to worry about shifting. No need for that anymore. Everything's done on one screen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so it's kind of amazing, like how we've become. I'm gonna say it, it. It just life is just that much easier now. We're, We're moving farther and farther away from the necessity of having a body. body. Correct. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's pretty gnarly, right there. Yeah. And we're literally more close than you think. It's just not as heavily televised as a bunch of other stuff, right? In the background, there is some stuff going on. I say background just because it's not in your face, right? All this other stuff we have going on is in your face, but there's stuff in the background that's going on. They're advancing like mad. Yeah, it's it, and that's the thing about technology, right? Technology will go da 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 da, and then it'll spike, and then it'll shoot up because technology grows exponentially. Yeah, um, <laughs> not linearly. Yeah, yeah. So it's 
It's gonna be interesting. I always think of the movie Wally. Yeah. Of movie. Yep. Of course, yeah, Wally. I, I think about it with just like how crazy. I don't think we're far from that no. at all, where people can just literally do everything they want from the comfort of their own chair. We got space force. We're gonna. Have yeah, space force, yeah, 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 we're yeah, going yeah. to Mars already. <laughs> well, Mars having space force. Exactly. So eventually, we might find a way to like just travel throughout the stars, kind of thing, and then just still be able to reproduce. But at the same time, like now we can reproduce without having sex. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's robots like, will take care of the baby. Yeah, yeah. And we can do that now. As long as so robots like, exist, it will survive. <clears throat> I, I don't think we're all that far away. And it's it's cool but scary at the same time. So I think if, I think one thing people don't realize is how many things we are taking for granted in terms of what our bodies can do. Actually, the utilization of our bodies. Yeah. So that's why that's why I'm really big about human potentiality, right? What can the human being do? What can it accomplish? And of course, a lot of it goes through the mind because the mind controls most of the body, right? Other than like the bacteria or the things that are help governing its satiation, it, its ability to continue uh, growing and uh, repairing itself, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but the mind controls a lot of it. So you, if you take control of your mind, can help control the body and to do crazy, amazing things. So before, if you, uh, um, Matt, I yeah, 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 Matt, I jump into the question here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of our that's kind of my answer with why why the fitness and the history of fitness and nutrition with the human species so far. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so anyways, uh, Matt says so. Mark, first of all, thank you for beating me up on Max in sixty seconds day. Of course, you're welcome. <laughs> um, also, you mentioned something about fish oils and omega threes, uh, but I was about to, about to ask what is the benefit of fish oil supplements. Nice. So, omega threes seem to have an incredibly good benefit in terms of your brain. Um, I just read this recent study uh, about uh, babies and kids that if kids, well, in, in utero, let me rephrase it, in utero, sorry about that, I apologize, in utero, if a lady actually consumes more fish or seafood in utero, the. 9.9 9 IQ points. Something, something like that. 9, nine, nine, nine IQ points. points higher. If they yeah. consume salmon, yeah. he actually pointed out specifically salmon. Yeah. But I mean, fish, right? Any kind of fish. Stuff that has that oils that you were talking about. Sorry, I didn't mean. No, 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 no. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, but, it, but yeah, exactly. So I, did, I just remember uh, this thing down my head. I was just like, holy crap! So seafood plays a huge role in terms of brain development, which makes me actually wonder. I think about other civilizations and other cultures where they incorporate seafood a lot, predominantly in their diet. You have to be careful about the big seafood. The mm-hmm. bigger the fish, the more mercury content they usually have. So you want to have smaller fish. Because mm-hmm. the smaller fish that has a little bit of mercury eats the bigger fish eats it, and the bigger fish eats it, the bigger fish like that, and then obviously the content inside them grows. Yeah. So you want to consume fish sparingly. It's only like two to, two to three times a week. Something yeah, like that. Only two to three times a week. And uh, stay away from big game fish, other mm-hmm. than tuna, I guess, because tuna and bottomfish, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. right. Bottomfish. Yeah, bottomfish yeah. that eat that stuff. Um, and another thing too is um, remember we started not too long ago about omega threes. Can actually help prevent like Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So you can you can combat a lot of brain issues and promote a lot of brain function by incorporating omega threes. I think like I said, anything with supplements, I you can you can get in its raw form in a sense. You know what I mean? Like if you got eat the fish, then have the supplement. Is what I'm saying. So if you can't eat the fish, but if you can't and you have to have a supplement, then do so. But um, yeah, one thing to remember is that when it comes to oils, uh, any kind of oil that you buy. Whether it's cooking oil or supplemental oil that you take in, there's a there's a very high likelihood that that oil is already rancid. That oil is already bad. In the process of them going through the, the like the manufacturing process of them bottling it, them putting it into capsules, them doing whatever in its process of going from where to where, it could go bad in that time frame. I've heard a new thing about um, <clears throat> turmeric too. Turmeric, apparently. I can't remember who it was from. I wish I remember the person. But there was one guy who has had an issue with turmeric because there tends to be a lot of stuff inside turmeric that's bad for you. Um, I'm not sure if that's part of the manufacturing process as well. Mm-hmm. As like as it's churning through, it, it adds in other products that you're like, well, that shouldn't be there, right? So if you think about manufacturing, you know, if anybody's been in manufacturing, because I have, particulates of the machinery get in that which is being processed. So if there's a lot of things that need to be pounded or grind up or whatever, plastics and metals get into it. And if there's stuff rolling overhead, if there's things that need to be lubricated as they're moving around, moving around, that stuff gets in, right? And they're allowed to have a certain percentage of that inside the food over a certain amount, right? So like yeah, in the hundreds of whatever volume, you can have this much and then you can have one rat, you can have whatever. There's limits that they allow you to have in it. That's legitimately true because you cannot get away from it. 
it's going to happen. But that's something to keep in mind. With the oils, try to find high quality oils that are hopefully as local as possible. And it's in dark containers, right? The darker the container, the less light that can come through. So if they have these big pallets of this stuff, and it's not in a box or whatever, and it's sitting on the side, like I used to pass by this Pepsi distribution center before, and they had ridiculous amounts of pallets outside for days. They're just out there soaking up the sun. So whatever is in that plastic and the sun's going through, it's leaking into that, that product. So when you get it, it's all, it's cold and I got it from this thing that's in the dark refrigerated. It's great. Well, for weeks or whatever, it's been out in the sun traveling here and there. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The thing that you have when you get it is very cleverly marketed and put that way so that you feel most safe about it. Do your due diligence to figure out where it came from as much as possible and the quality of it and try to stick to it as the highest quality as you can, right? To me, the money's worth it, right? Because my life, I want to have a long, healthy life that I enjoy throughout and not just like, oh, I was able to drink until I was stupid and I feel like crap when I wake up and my knees constantly hurt and I can barely walk, I can't run, but I'm good, I can sit and watch TV or the government's paying for me. To me, that's not a, that's not a life I want to live. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, for me, because for me, longevity kind of plays a little bit of a role, but more about the, I'm more about the quality of life. Right. So, like, my thing is, like, if I can, if I can maintain this till I'm, like, 50s-ish, <laughs> I'm, I'm down. I'm okay with that. That, to me, is ahead of the curve. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if I can ask you want to do is be 120, just, oh, yeah. evil. And yeah, it lasts four <laughs> years of your life, and you, you're bedridden or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of that suicide stab look like, why do old people commit more suicide than like, like, they <laughs> Pull the plug. I think it was like 85 plus had, a, had the highest, or one of the, the highest, highest like 45 to 55 and 85 had the highest suicide rate. And you're like, oof. Like, rough. I kind of get it, right? And you're just like, yeah, did someone pull the plug already? Like, yeah. I'm barely living now. Like, yeah. To me, I think that should be okay. Yeah. I really do. If you <laughs> have the sound mind and you're that old and you're like, guys, I'm done. I feel <laughs> great. I love my life. I love you guys. But it's starting to suck. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go out, like put me to sleep. I'm good, and mm -hmm. I think like, okay, cool. I think that's legit. Like I'm cool with me doing that. Yeah. So that's how I feel about that. And turn me into a tree. It's yeah. Cool. Oh, see, that's funny. That's one thing I always mention too. Uh, it's like if I die, just just bear me with a tree or something like that, or bear me super the soon to be tree. I've seen the Falcons. It's one of my favorite movies. But anyways, <laughs> oh, that was one thing that just reminded me. I, can't, I wish I remember the tree name, but there is a tree that is the largest organism on Earth mm -hmm. because it started from one tree and then grew and grew and grew and grew. And the whole forest of whatever oh. acres it is of trees is one system, kind of like the brain or the body or whatever. Oh, right? Imagine my, my, my one hair there. that's on my body or I'm on my hair. One hair on my one hair on my chest. <laughs> one hair on my head. That's me. It's one hair on my chest. <laughs> One hair on your head is, a is all of these are connected, right? Basically, through your skin, through your scalp. Mm -hmm. So, the same thing with like a tree. Imagine it's a tree and then the forest. So, if you infect or jack one up, it feeds and tries to help mm -hmm. that one out or whatever. So, that's pretty cool to think about. I don't know why, but I just like, oh, that reminded me. This huge organism of tree that's like, boom, like, make me a freaking tree. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think that will conclude our questions for FAQ Fridays, you guys. Thank you very much for those who have been tuning in and feeding us questions. We really, really appreciate it. If you guys want to get a hold of us, you guys are more than welcome to email us at onyourmark.fit at gmail.com. If you already don't follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Facebook with OIM Worldwide. Uh, our Instagram handle is onyourmark.fit. And now we're soon going to be spreading towards well, TikTok. We have TikTok now, so if you guys don't already know, we've been having TikTok. and having a little too much fun with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> actually, not so short. We're like, well, let's do something crazy short. <laughs> yeah. So TikTok, uh, it's OIM underscore worldwide. And then we're soon to be spreading to locals. For those who don't know what that is, uh, we'll get more in depth about that and LinkedIn. Yeah, so LinkedIn. Really so we are on LinkedIn. Again, we just need to plug some stuff in there, and we were just trying to make sure that it's curated appropriately. So... That's why we've been a, a little lacking on that. But one thing I want to mention before we're completely done here is 4x4x48. Oh, David yes. Goggins starts tonight. 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Who's doing it? Who's jumping in? Mark I and I and my friend Mark. God damn it. We're totally doing it. So it's 9 and 8. It's going to jack us up. We're going to figure yeah. it out. So look forward four to miles that. miles every four hours for the next 48 hours. Yep. So. I'm going to be posting up my progress. Let you guys know how it's going to go, how I feel, and when I die. I mean, yeah. basically, you'll get an update, but I'll be there. Like, oh. I, I figure I'll probably have my phone with me, and it's going to be like a Blair Witch. <laughs> my body. I'm at mile 34. <laughs> yeah. Someone said help. 
<laughs> I think someone's chasing me. Yeah. I'm going two miles an hour. It's not going to be too hard. But yeah. <laughs> they, they win. They win. They win. So yeah, yeah, I wanted to make sure I put plug that out there. If anybody's willing to do that, send us your information or like let's let's help each other out. Let's motivate each other to power through that because that's something that I think is amazing beyond like beyond just the thing itself. It does something to the mind, right? David Goggins says this stuff all the time. It calluses it. It calluses the mind. It creates something that like I'm gonna do something no matter what. I'm gonna push through it. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're gonna like freaking wash the dishes or something, I'm gonna wash the dishes every day. I'm never going to stop. Like, it doesn't matter. That builds something in your mind that allows you to, it leaks over into other things in your life, right? So that's what this potentially can do for you. You're like, I'm going to push myself and see what my limits are. I'm going to see where I'm at, see what I can do. How far am I willing to push myself, right? And then that can leak over into something else in your life. What am I going to do with my career? How far can I push myself to have the best possible career, the best dad, the best whatever, husband, anything, right? Think about that. Always progress, right? Okay. Awesome. That was a good end. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next Friday, Happy Friday, Saturday. Uh, ben, are you doing structure Saturday or what's uh? What was the thing that oh, I ended up doing last structure Saturday? I forgot. Oh, I ended up doing structure Saturday. So yeah, we're actually in the middle of an issue transition with Ben at the moment with some of the videos and all that stuff like that. Um, yeah, so last structure you... Saturday, I did, I did, a, I did, a, I did a, um, I think it was, it was oh, it was content. Yeah, it was a content. Yeah, yeah. so it was F U F U F A Q. <laughs> um, um, crunch down. We uh, created micro content from yeah. the FAQ. So yeah, that's so, that's probably gonna happen again. I don't know. Actually, you know what? It's gonna happen again no matter what. But I think one thing is, so we're kind of in a weird transition where we're kind of evolving our, I guess you could say, our platforms here. Right. Um, so podcasting is definitely an upper grabs at the moment. Um, we talk about locals, YouTube, things of that sort. A lot of times when it comes to our content, we really want to make sure that we are reaching as many people as we can as possible to really help them out. Yeah. Um, and so and hopefully people will see a, a lot of value for what we are trying to present. And uh, so keep on the lookout for that. Um, we'll definitely keep you guys um, updated with that and let you guys know what's going on in each of the platforms that we are participating in. Yep, absolutely. So look forward to it. And thank you again for jumping on and giving us questions and helping us help you, right? Again, always progress, everybody. <laughs> right.